This is the second of three videos examining some aspects of life on the Takini Salt Flats, Yukon, Canada. The Takini Salt Flats are located west of Whitehorse in Yukon, Canada, within the traditional territories of the Kwanlandun First Nation and the Champaign and Ishihik First Nation. In the first video about the Takini Salt Flats, I discussed their geological origin. You might find that first video helpful to understand how the lakes and the salt flats formed. In the second video about the Takini Salt Flats, I provide a very simple description of an unusual magenta-colored bacterium that grows on one of these lakes. Now, rather than being a typical travel video, this video is a little sciencey because it is born out of my curiosity about that amazing magenta-colored bacterium. I am not an expert on bacteria, so what I present is a synthesis of other sources of information. In doing so, I know I have introduced some inaccuracies that will be quite apparent to experts, but I think you will enjoy seeing this very different colored bacterium. Let's give it a try. On Google Earth, you can see an area in the Ibex Valley with white ground. That is the Takini Salt Flat. The area around the lakes and some of the lake bottoms is covered by a sodium sulfate salt, which gives the land its white color. That salt creates an ideal habitat for some unusual salt-loving plants, but they will be the subject of a third video. Indirectly, the sodium sulfate salt also plays an important role in supporting the beautiful and striking magenta-colored bacterium seen here lining the rim of one of the salt lakes. This bacterium is the focus of this video. The magenta-colored bacterium is spectacular to look at. It is the most unusual bacterial colony that I've seen in my life. Let's take a few minutes to get a bird's eye view of this magenta-colored bacterium that lives in the lake. Bacterium is apparently not rare in Yukon lakes. What is rare is the concentration of this bacterium along the edge of this lake. I understand this is the only lake in Yukon where this magenta-colored bacterium is so abundant. So that begs the question, why is it so abundant here? So by now, you can gather that one of the really intriguing features of the Takini Salt Flat is the presence of this magenta-colored slime that rims the lake. The magenta-colored slime is not pollution. It's a mass of living bacteria, but not just any bacteria. It is a magenta or purple-colored sulfur bacteria named, let's go slowly, Thiohalocapsa halophylla. Now that's a bit of a mouthful. So let's break down the words. Thio means sulfur, halo means of the salt, capsa means capsule, 
and halophila means salt loving. Put all this together in the scientific name thiohalocapsa halophila loosely means the sulfur capsule of the salt and salt loving. So there you go. The following information is distilled from an interview with J. Thomas Beatty, a professor in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at the University of British Columbia, reported in the Yukon News by Jackie Hong, and some online web resources that I list in the video description. First, the magenta colored bacterium is apparently not dangerous to humans or wildlife. Second, the stringy mass is an aggregation of millions of filaments and blobs of bacteria. And third, the abundance of the bacterium increases in some saline lakes. So, the key to having a high concentration of magenta colored bacteria in this thermokarst lake is the high concentration of sodium sulfate salts that are so characteristic of the Takini salt flats. This lake actually is home to two types of bacteria the magenta colored purple sulfur bacteria, which is so striking in the lake, lives in the water and in the water saturated muds immediately at the interface with the water. But it does not live alone in this lake. It has bacteria friends. There is a second type of bacterium that lives in the white salt muds below the lake bottom. The second type of bacterium, shown as a Pac-Man-like object in the cartoon, produces its food energy by eating organic material, such as dead magenta colored purple sulfur bacteria, shown in the cartoon as the magenta colored worm-like objects with X's in its eyes. And it also eats sulfate bearing salts, shown as the white triangles in the cartoon. After its meal, this second type of bacteria produce a sulfide waste product, shown as yellow squares in the cartoon. Opportunistically, the magenta-colored purple sulfur bacteria, which are the ones we see in the lake water, require sulfur in the form of a sulfide to photosynthesize. That is, the purple sulfur bacteria use sulfide waste from the second type of bacteria to create their food energy. During that photosynthesis, the purple sulfur bacteria convert the sulfide form of sulfur back into a sulfate salt waste product. Well, this sounds pretty complicated. We can think of this as a cycle of sharing sulfur in different forms between the two types of bacteria. Waste from one becomes part of the food source for the other and vice versa. So let's summarize. The magenta colored purple sulfur bacteria is very abundant in this lake on the Takini salt flat because of the abundance of the white colored sodium sulfate salts. This magenta colored bacterium is called Thiohalocapsa halophila. The purple sulfur bacteria lives symbiotically with a second and different type of bacterium that lives buried in the lake sediments. Each of these two bacteria species use the waste product of each other to create its respective food energy. Now remember, I am not an expert on bacteria and I have simplified greatly a lot of information likely to the point of introducing errors. But as long as the thermokarst lakes remain and produce sodium sulfate salt by a process of evaporation and the climate does not drastically change, the Takini salt flat is likely to continue to support this beautiful purple sulfur bacterium. <music>